everyone, welcome back to the Everton Career Mode. It's Season 2, Episode 12, and as you guys remember, we've been struggling as of late. We got a win against Newcastle in our last game, but prior to that, we fell out of the FA Cup against Preston North, and that was a big blow for us, and we dropped points against Middlesbrough. I want to go back to that game for just a second here, because we dominated the team in a way you'd expect to dominate a newly promoted side. A lot of chances, a little bit more possession than we're used to. 6.3 expected goals. If you look at the heat map, we have a lot of possession in our final third. Everything but the final finish. We had a number of chances, but we just couldn't put them away. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I want to say he had a good game, but it's just not good enough. If you look at it, he had great positioning. Exactly where you want him to be against the side like this. Not dropped off into the box looking for goals. 8 shots, 4.3 expected goals, and only one to show for it. DCL, you gotta do better. Or we're not gonna get the fourth spot that we want to here. We've got to do better, and I wanted to show this because our next games are against Burnley, Leeds, teams like that, and we need to grind points, we need to take our chances, because once we face that schedule where we have Spurs, Chelsea, and City in a row, we're not gonna win too much there. We're gonna try our best, but we need to pick up points against the easy teams. And that's why I wanted to show this, because that's what we've got coming up next. As you can see, we're not that far off top four. Three points off of Liverpool, seven off of City and Spurs. It's not that much, but realistically, these teams aren't going to lose that many points. So we need to do our best to make sure we get as many points as possible against the quote-unquote weaker sides, especially in games like this against Leeds, for example. And this is a bit of a mixed bag when we play against them because we either do very well or extremely poorly, and that's all down to the system they play, specifically their press, the press after possession loss. Because if you're able to beat it, there's a lot of spaces to exploit. But if you can't, you really will struggle. And that's what usually happens in our games. Now, I know it's set on balanced for build-up, for chance creation. But I find this is a little bit more offensive because of their player instructions in this 4-1-4-1. Bamford is set to get behind. Their central midfielder is always looking to get forward. Then you've got your wingers cutting inside and allowing those fullbacks to bomb forward. So it does lend itself to a pretty offensive system. Now, what's also unique in this Bielsa 4-1-4-1 is the wingers and, in fact, most of the players coming back on defense. So they're required to run a lot forward and then back, forward and back. And that lends itself to a lot of stamina depletion, which is why their player profile always includes players with an incredible amount of stamina. You can see their left mid, right mid, Daniel James and Jack Harrison, they have loads of pace, but they also have the work rate and the stamina to go with it, which is characteristic of a Bielsa side, so we're just gonna have to watch out for that. Sometimes you can see them wane a little bit towards the end, and that's where you can get maybe a late goal. Just something to watch out for. We're gonna set up in a 4-4-2. I'm gonna make some rotation here because we have a game against AC Milan coming up, so Tony for DCL, Alan St. Maximin is gonna rest, Cantwell is gonna come in, and Davies is gonna play, and we're gonna try to get a result here against Leeds United. Teams walk out with you. Please welcome our visitors, Leeds United and your Everton. Leeds really showed what they're capable of, guys. They pressured us from minute one and we really found it difficult to breathe. They got a lot of chances, especially in the first half, and Pickford had to be on duty. He made a save there, but it was constant. We couldn't beat the press. Ducore, great interception here, and they're on the front foot. And this is the advantage of systems which press, especially high, is you're in the opponent's half, in their third sometimes, and you get easy chances. Another one here, Pickford had to make another save. And it was constant. Even when we made good defensive plays, we tried to get it out. A great aggressive interception interception by the left back Firpo and they're on the front foot the central midfielder already in the box gets a header pick for that to make another save constant pressure and we couldn't beat the press look at Jack Harrison one interception Harry's errands then a sliding tackle look at the energy the determination he gets it back there in the final third lays it off to Bamford pick for to make another save it was constant and then finally we were able to somehow slightly beat the press we lost it at first but then finally we were able to get it back and we got one chance of our own late in the first half this was literally our first chance of the half we got it we played it around Davies goes into space he gets it and he smashes it in guys totally against the run of play we get an undeserved 1-0 lead going into the second half here In the second half, it was largely more of the same from Leeds. They continued to press us, and they had the bulk of the chances. We really couldn't get anything going. Early on, they throw in a nice cross here into the back post. Pickford had to make another save. 
If not for him, we would have been down by three goals, probably, because he made a number of really good saves. We tried to attack and actually got a fortuitous chance here. Cantwell on his left foot puts it just wide. Those are the chances you need to take. It was far from our best game, and defensively, we were a little bit off our game. They play a really nice ball here. They beat the offside trap, and look at Daniel James. He makes a very intelligent run, loses Tierney, and it's 1-1, guys. That was criminal from Tierney. He lost Daniel James completely, and... Leeds tried to press for a late goal. We finally get it back here and have a really nice counter. I brought on Mopai for fresh legs and he just about got away from his man. He puts it in, guys, and it's 2-1. And this is down to fresh legs at the very end of the game against the Leeds side who runs a lot and the fact that maybe Meslier wasn't playing or else he would have probably saved that. But in the end, we get a win, 2-1. Far from our best game. Far, far from our best game. We did not do well at all beating Leeds Press, but we somehow managed to grind the result and that's the most important thing here that we do have to improve for our games to come, especially our next game here against AC Milan. Guys, sometimes I look at these stats and I really don't know where it comes from. How did we have 3.9 expected goals when Leeds had only 2.7? They were clearly the better side with more opportunities. They pressed us back and that's why if you look at the heat map, there's so much possession for us in our own third because they pressed us back and we tried to beat the press. We failed at it for the most part. They had a lot of shots on target, a lot more than us. In fact, we only had two. So I really don't know where that 3.9 expected goals is coming from. There were some positives. Davies had a really good game. He's a workhorse in the middle, defensively very sound, and then in terms of his passes, he was very tidy for the most part, and his outlet passes were really good. The team just wasn't performing up to snuff, and just against the system where they press, we really couldn't get it going. But for the most part, Davies was really good, and Pickford was excellent. I mean, if it wasn't for him, we really wouldn't have won this game he saved us, he bailed us out, and he does this on a number of occasions during the season. Probably saves us anywhere from 10 to 15 points a season. He's just incredible. All right, guys, here we go. Champions League football, Everton versus AC Milan, round of 16. The first game is at San Siro, and this is going to be a proper battle, a proper matchup, and an even one because both teams are similarly rated, 80-81. Both teams have mid-80s overalls. This is going to be a proper game. They set up in a balanced system with everything set at 50, almost like they forgot to set anything, but they're just going to be content to sit back, keep their shape, and adjust their play depending on what's going on during any which phase of the game. So whether they do forward runs, possession, long balls, it really depends on what's going on during that portion of the game. Now, their player instructions are very conservative, I felt. They're more so looking to keep solidity at the back and try to get whatever chances they can. They have that focal point, in a target man, then they've got that classic 10 roll who's free roaming, but their wingers are set to balance. They're going to be making short runs, they're making forward runs, they're going to be cutting inside or staying wide depending on the situation. One of their fullbacks, Hernandez, is perfectly suited to go forward, so he's going to be bombing forward, but Calabria is staying back, and that's going to counter Alan St. Maximin on our left hand side. But first and foremost, their aim is to be solid at the back. And their CBs provide a perfect platform for that. Kier and Tomori are quite solid. Tomori is lightning fast, so he'll be able to clean up anything going into the back. Hernandez is great at going forward. He also has enough stamina and work rate to come back on defense. And Kessie is a physical specimen who's going to be screening that defense. Honestly, their quality come in the defense and in the midfield. They really don't have a lot of firepower going forward. Brahim and Martial are not world beaters, so the real focus here is to be solid. We have a little bit of a problem in terms of fatigue. I tried my best to rotate. We're gonna have to deal with it. Townsend comes in for Rafinha because he still needs time to bet in, and obviously Di Lorenzo plays all our Champions League games. And we're gonna have a proper go here at Milan, guys. Here we go. Everton in the round of 16. Let's have it. This really was a pretty even game. Both teams had their chances. Milan, I think, had the better chances early on. And Martial, to be fair, was really doing well in that target man role. Good save by Pickford off of a shot from him. 
and we had our chances as well. Alan St. Maximin started the game off quite well, especially in the first 10 minutes. He was driving at people, making things happen. He skips away from Calabria here, then away from another defender. He drives into the middle just like you want, and Magnan makes the save. That was a really good drive from Alan St. Maximin. Milan came back, and they tried to make things happen. They were very patient on the ball, and they moved it around. They made some good runs. Marshall makes a nice little one here, gets his own rebound, and it's 1-0. Guys, a little bit of a defensive error, but also some bad luck, and Marshall puts Milan ahead 1-0. They tried to continue to press Milan and they got a little bit overexposed. Tierney makes the interception and we play really fast vertically. Calvert-Lewin is on his bike. He gets the ball from Richarlison on the break and he smashes it past Magnan. Guys, 1-1, a great response to that goal from Milan. We took a lot more initiative in the second half and it resulted in a number of chances for us. What I found worked best was these penetrating balls in between the CDMs and the defense. This time Calvert-Lewin gets on the end of it and he smashes it against the post. What a chance. Tierney gets it on the left hand side. It was good pressure from us the entire second half. We don't win it but we get the second ball. There was a lot of effort and enthusiasm in this game. Guendouzi played another ball in between the lines. Mopai has a shot. Magnan makes the save, he was on top of his game. We had a corner off of that, I brought on Gray, I brought on the Silva, but Magnan was saving everything. Then one late corner, Koulibaly towers over everyone, it's cleared off the line, but the ref says it's a goal. That must have been so close. I want to see this again because that must have been millimeters, maybe inches, because it really looked like he cleared it in time. We look at the replay here, and that is a that is a highway robbery. That is not a goal. That is not ball, the whole of the ball over the whole of the line. Milan just got robbed. We win the game 2-1 on a highway robbery. That shouldn't have been a goal. I'm sort of embarrassed winning like this. This should have been a draw. They probably deserve the draw. They got robbed. I don't even know what to say. It's the first time I've seen this. Goal line technology fails, guys, and that's how we win this game. That's it. I don't even know what to say, guys. I rarely see something like this. This should have been 1-1. They got robbed. Even the stats say it was an even game. Even expected goals. Chance creation was about even. It just really felt like an even matchup. Okay, we played a little bit differently. They kept a lot more possession. We were content most of the time sitting and countering. But that's just the difference in systems. Maybe we had a little bit more shots on target. But that's because we mounted that pressure at the end of the game and got a series of them. This really did feel like a draw would be pretty much even, pretty much deserved. They got robbed on a bogus call. I'll take it, but there's certainly stuff to improve. It wasn't our best performance. Calvert-Lewin probably deserves praise. He took his chance this time, which is exactly what you want. He only had two of them. He took one of them. It's great. Obviously, his build-up play was excellent. He dropped when he needed to. His passes were on point. So there's definitely positives in that, but we need to do a little bit better in the second leg to make sure we close that out. Burnley's up next, guys. To be fair, we usually find a way to break them down and get a good result, so it's a winnable game for sure. I don't even have to look at their tactics. I know they're gonna play direct passing, long balls, they're gonna cross the ball into those forwards. It's a classic dice system, classic 4-4-2, two banks of four guys. Those strikers are gonna be playing off each other. Like I said, one's a target man, one's a little bit faster, looking to get knockdowns, get in behind in Wilson. You've got wingers who are looking to cross but are not too adventurous, coming back on defense and making sure that you've got that rigid 4-4-2, two, two banks of four. It's solidity in defense, that's the name of the game. And if you have quality up front like Wilson and Poulsen, you always have a chance to win. It's a Premier League game, guys, nonetheless. An away game at that, so definitely have to be vigilant. There's going to be a number of rotations here. Mopai, Tony, Rogers, Branthwaite getting game time because players are fatigued. They're also going to get their chance to shine. And let's see how well we can do after we had a Wednesday night in the Champions League. Ideally, you want to break a team like Burnley down quickly. If they're solid defensively, they just might stifle you. 
But we did that. Alan St. Maximin drove past him like it was nothing. Found Guendouzi in open space. Sixth minute, guys, and it's 1-0. Good start. And honestly, I thought we were going to steamroll them at this point. Because usually I score maybe late against Burnley and then, then we win. But this time we scored early. I thought it was going to be landslide. But to be fair, Burnley kept fighting. And a nice little interplay here from the strikers. Branthwaite leaves and Wilson curls it in. 1-0. That's criminal. Branthwaite, you were in no man's land. Come on. Be a little bit closer to your defensive partner there. This gave Burnley win in the sails, and they started attacking with much more confidence. Guendouzi gives it away here, and look at this distance shot. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Pickford makes the save, and they just kept coming. I was surprised, actually, to see Burnley and how much technical skill they had. And Wilson, acres of space here, gets it, and it's 2-1. What is this defending? Why does no one want to pick up the main goal threat? Anyone want to put a man on him? Come on, guys. Nope. We scrap and we counter and we finally get an opportunity. Alan St. Maximin just nicely lays it off for Calvert-Lewin and it's 2-2. Guys, what a goal for us to start this game. We ended the first half with a goal, guys, and we started the second half with one. Rafinha picks it up, and he just curls it into the back of the net. That's his first goal for the club. That's what he has in his locker. What a goal, Rafinha. Please, more of this. Thank you. That was amazing, and I can't wait for this guy to get into full swing of things. He'll be just a peach of a player. We really locked down Burnley, and they didn't have much chances of their own. We had a few. Wayne Hennessy makes a good save off of Mopai's shot. And in the very final moments of the game, Burnley got a red. They didn't have the motivation or the men to play against us. We have a great counter here. Mopai pulls away his man, squares it for Calvert-Lewin, and it's wide. <laughs> Come on, Calvert-Lewin. You gotta put those away. Where is his finishing boots over the last few episodes? I have no idea. He's really been struggling. But we get the win here, guys. We get 3-2 win against Burnley. Honestly, we're scraping these results. They feel a little bit easy maybe in the end. But they are really getting scraped here. One goal games. We're not blowing anyone out. But we get the three points. And that's what's important. Guys, on the whole, we probably deserved this win, and we were probably the better side. Certainly, we had more chances, 4.4 expected goals. We had that pressure in their final third, because Burnley likes to sit back, so we were invited this time to have the pressure, to have the possession a little bit more. And honestly, switching to this 4-4-2, we leak a lot of goals anyways. So yes, we lost two against Burnley, but we're just going to outscore our opponents. I feel like that's the best way, at least till the end of the season, because we couldn't find any sort of consistency defensively earlier on in the season. And we had a lot of chances. We had a lot of shots on goal, so that's what you want to see. It was all facilitated by guys like Alan St. Maximin, and without this guy, we would be way behind. Two assists, this time he wasn't electric, but he was composed and he got his two assists. Definitely a mention for Guendouzi here. He bossed that midfield today. He even chipped with the goal, but the more impressive part was just his passing and the fact that it was always forward thinking. And that's great from a little bit more attacking version of a box-to-box -box midfielder. Definitely great performance from him. The last game of the episode is against Man United, guys. We've got three wins on the bounce, Newcastle, Leeds, and now Burnley. So that's great. We got the nine points from the games that we needed. And now it's time to translate that decent form and actually build upon it in this game against Man United. They have a system which tries to press a little bit and force you to make a mistake. They want to capitalize on that. So pressure on heavy touch. But when they're building up, they build up slowly, keep possession, try to work the ball around. And they've got the perfect players and system for it. It's a 4-2-3-1, very balanced. You've got first and foremost Fernandez in that free-roaming number 10 role. And he's going to make everything tick. And you've got Ronaldo running on off of him. So that's going to be great. You've got that left-hand side asymmetrical to the right-hand side. You've got Rashford free-roaming, Shaw bombing forward. So there's going to be a lot happening on that left-hand side. A little bit less on the right-hand side where you've got Sancho cutting inside and trying to get into the box, trying to get more central areas, but Juan Bissaka isn't going to overlap as much. He's going to keep solidity at the back. The main threat here is the offense, guys. They have a lot of firepower, and that's their strength. They've got Ronaldo, who maybe he's lost a little bit of pace, but he's deadly, and you've got Bruno Fernandes. I mean, 93 attack position, 91 vision. If he's on his game, he can destroy you. They have a lot of weaknesses. They have a lot of holes at the back in the central midfield, but if this guy ticks... 
they can destroy you. And then, I mean, look at these overalls for Rashford and Sancho, right? They've got pace, they've got technical ability. It's high octane offense, and that's what we need to shut down and take advantage of their weak central midfielders and try to get some goals. We do historically decently well against Man United in the league, especially. Now, we do need to get revenge for them eliminating us from that Carabao Cup, guys. So let's have it. Everton versus Man United. Here we go. To be fair, Man United probably had the better chances. Certainly in the first half, they were the better team, and they fed Ronaldo a lot. He doesn't need a lot of space, gets a good shot here, Pickford makes a save, and they were constantly pressuring. We had one or two opportunities, and we did well. Alan St. Maximin pulled out wide a lot this game, and he turned provider here. Rishi gets it, puts it in the back of the net, guys. It's a quick 1-0, and yet again, we are in front against Man United because they can't defend. As good as they are offensively, they really can't defend. If their life depended on it, they couldn't defend. They continued to attack and they had some good opportunities. We really didn't have many. One at the beginning of the game and then this one right here. Alan St. Maximin lets Rishi loose. It's a tight angle, but he puts it in the back of the net. He snipes it into that bottom corner. I would at least expect De Gea to do better. I know the defense in the midfield for Man United isn't great, but I expect De Gea to do better. It's a quick 2-0, guys. Now, obviously, they kept attacking because this is what they do best. Pickford was on point, Ronaldo was getting a lot of shots, finally they played it off a corner and they do really well here. To be fair, the attack positioning from Bruno Fernandes to find this little bit of space puts it in. It's 2-1 guys, it's a, good, it's a good goal, it really is and it's 2-1, a little bit of doubt seeping in now. The doubts continued into the second half, guys, and you can tell when you make these small defensive errors, guys aren't getting close enough to their men. Simple shots like this. Pickford shouldn't have to be making these saves. There should be a very sound defense cutting it all out, and it didn't happen. And individual errors was another thing. I mean, look at this. Guendouzi picks it up. What is this? What was that pass? Ronaldo gets it. Pickford has to make another save. And you could just feel it was going to come bite you in the ass. Van Beek gets it on the edge of the box. It's a ricochet. Okay, fair enough. And then Pickford has to make another save. And you can just feel we were getting more and more uncomfortable. And the pressure paid off for United. Fernandez puts in Rashford with a beautiful pass. He dinks it over Pickford. Koulibaly can't get to it. It's 2-2. I knew it was going to happen. It was on the cards. You could just feel it that you were going to lose a goal. And at that point, I'm like, okay, we need to bring on subs and do something about this. Brought on Davies. He takes one touch. Outside the box, takes another touch, and he puts it in the back of the neck, guys. What a goal. I love this guy. He came in and he calmed everything down with one touch of the ball. We were confident. We weren't getting as harassed by Man United. They seemed a little bit more deflating after losing that goal. And then we continued to press. Gray gets on the end of this, and that was a really good save by De Gea. Guys, in the end, 3-2 win against United. That's four wins in a row now. Four wins in this episode. It's a great episode. We bounced back from that really dubious month we had against Middlesbrough, Preston, and then all those teams we were losing points to, and we came back and we did extremely well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave a like, subscribe if you like this content, and I will see you next time, guys. Laters!